nerds, geeks, sweaties. Look how far we've come. We rule the world. But it wasn't always this way. Let's go back to a time when there was no comic book cinematic universe, when you had to wait three years to get a superhero movie. Back to a time when Batman used a credit card. This is a film about a superhero movie that didn't get made. In 1998, a movie called Superman Lives was in production. It was gonna be directed by Tim Burton and star Nicolas Cage as Superman. I've been fascinated with this since I first heard about it. From the concept design, to the various scripts, to the people involved, this would have been the most craziest cosmic Superman movie ever made. What do you think the Superman Lives movie that Tim Burton and Nicolas Cage were gonna make, what do you think that movie would have been like? Nicolas Cage is Probably one of our generation's definitive actors. I don't know if he'd be able to pull it off or not, but it would have been interesting. It's one of those, you know, what ifs. I saw some of the artwork, and I just didn't, it just didn't fly with me. There's nothing about his face that fits. Nothing about his voice that fits that deep Superman voice that you can trust. It just seems kind of hilarious. I'm like, I'm sorry, guy, no. Nicholas Cage is a great actor, so I think he would have, like, he could have played that really well. You know, when we all watched George Reeves and I watched Christopher Reeves, I wasn't like, that's George Reeves, Chris Reeves. It was Superman. Nick Cage, you like, that's Nick Cage as Superman. Nick Cage would have been awesome. I mean, it's still one of my favorites is Wild and Hard with him. Yeah. I just think of that guy as Superman would be awesome. The attempts to make superhero movies in the 90s weren't particularly successful, I felt. Dick Tracy did the same, or the Joel Shoemaker Batman movies did the same, with the costumes right. super bright and primary coloured, and, and the idea of trying to create what a comic would look like on screen. I mean, it obviously it would have been interesting to see. It would have been pretty weird to see Nicolas Cage as Superman. Superman Lives was basically written by three different screenwriters, Kevin Smith, Wesley Strick, and Dan Gilroy. All three scripts revolved around the same story, basically taken from the comic book series, The Death of Superman, where Superman fought the villains Lex Luthor, Brainiac, and the killing machine Doomsday. Doomsday killed Superman in the comic books, and then he came back to life using Kryptonian technology. This revitalized the comic book series. Warner Brothers took their cue from the comic books to revitalize their movie franchise. On the set of Superman Returns, at any moment in Video Village, Brian had sort of a, a little like it was like a little binder no one could really touch it and inside he had this photograph of Nicolas Cage from Tim Burton's aborted version of, of Superman oftentimes we'll be in studio executive meetings and people will bitch about the fact that Brandon Routh's costume is so similar to the comics that it has the underwear that it looks a little kitschy and so Brian whenever that would happen in a meeting would snap his fingers and have his assistant pull out this photograph and it would instantly shut them up. He would reach over to Video Village, pick up his book, and he would say, you know, you guys were gonna make this. We're not making this. Sometimes the interest in the what if is stronger than the actual final product because it fills your mind with the possibilities of what could have been. That's something that interested me when I saw the concept art for Superman Lives. Amazing, strange designs, cosmic ideas, creatures, aliens, Superman with a strange metal S. All these things interested me, and I wanted to find out why it never got made. Imagine a distant planet in a far off star system, light years from here. We've never seen it in our telescopes, we know nothing about them, but they look a bit like us. A star that's in the last days of its life and imagine that the planet is under threat of destruction and those fantastic scientists say that there's only one thing they can do and that's to send a child out into space who might carry the physical attributes and mental attributes that these people have engendered over the centuries and imagine then that this child coming to earth suddenly is gifted with powers that come from the great society that, that gave birth to him and he not only brings those powers but he brings a morality just imagine what he could do to our world with the aim of changing it and making us better.
Superman lives, or Superman Reborn, and then Superman lives, and then later Superman returns, was meant to be kind of like, let's kickstart Superman again in a bit more earnest way. Not the like spit, curl, and wink of Chris Reeve and, and Dick Donner. They wanted a 90s version of Superman, even though when I was writing, all I was writing was Chris Reeve. I thought Brian Singer's version forgot to like put in Action. Yeah, like fucking, he didn't get to punch anybody. He punched an island. And then somebody pointed out that like, Superman doesn't get to punch everything every movie. And I thought about it and I looked back and sometimes he didn't punch He fought some uh, video game type things in Superman 3. Fought good taste in Superman 3. Fought himself, That's remember? Right. Uh, Turned purple and drinking whiskey, <laughs> burning totally. with peanuts. Like I could see why Brian Singer was sucked into doing a quasi-sequel to the Dick Donner Superman movies. Those were our Superman movies. They were so fucking magical. Yeah. And they found a way to make them work where your parents could sit there and be like, yeah, all right, he's fighting General Zod, I get it. And they're not like, this is horse shit. You know, they're like, all right, I can get behind this. So, you know, there's a, a pull to it because it's the classic lore and Dick Donner did such a great job of it. Superman was something that I had seen with Dick Donner and I'd loved, and I was mesmerized by it. So that was the granddaddy of all the superheroes. I've made over 100 movies, movies that I did with Polygram Pictures and all the movies that we produced and everything. I was the chairman of Sony and I was leaving. Peter and I were splitting up and they said to me, you're not gonna believe this, but we think uh, Superman is available. So I got into negotiation with the Falkinds and their lawyers because Warner Brothers had not picked up the option. They didn't know that, it was before computers. So they would have sent someone in a back room with a bing, 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 going through all these things. It's not on the computer, it would be normally red flagged. I got a call from Terry Semmel, who was the head of Warner Brothers, and said, we want you to come back to the studio. And I said, I'm working on something now, which is really what I want to do. I had made Batman. And he said, what? And I said, I, I think I bought the rights to Superman. He said, you idiot. Warner Brothers owns it. I own it. I said, no, you don't, check came back and he said, you're right, you do. You know, essentially, if you read my script for Superman Lives, it's like fan fiction. It's, it's, and, and fuck, I was so nascent in my career. I was 26 years old, 27 years old, 96, 97. So I sat down and met with a creative exec named Basil Iwanek. He goes, what would you think about Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian? So I said, that exists? He's like, yeah, we've been trying to figure out Beetlejuice for years. I was like, what's to figure out? Burton cracked the code. He goes, well, you know, We've been working on, trying to work on a Superman, and I was like, Superman? Like, that was no part of the meeting that I was going in for. It just came up in conversation. But he had given me the Superman script to take home, and oh, good Lord, terrible title from the jump. Might as well have just said Superman remarketed for a new generation, you know? It was just not the Superman movie I ever would have imagined. There was a scene in it I remember specifically where Clark Kent's going to a psychiatrist and talking about, like, you know, having this... I'm Superman conversation. And the psychiatrist is like, no, you're not. And this is something for a comic book fan, particularly at that time and place in my life. I was like, oh, why don't you just piss on the gospels, fuck? You know, why don't you just make Jesus do dick jokes? This is ridiculous. Why not just reach out to the guys who do the comic books? They would get it. This guy don't get it. And he goes, yeah, but those guys are comic book guys. I swear to you. That was 1996 mentality. Get another call from my agent, he goes, you made it all the way up the chain, dude. You're gonna go meet with Lorenzo de Bonaventura, the head of Warner Brothers. I was like, really? I was the executive in charge of it for quite a period of time when I was Warner Brothers. John Peters came to Warner's and said, listen, I think we can put all these rights together. We put the rights together. Kevin Smith came in with a really great take. Lorenzo was the first one to ever say this of everyone I met with. He goes, all right, well, what would you do differently? And I was like, oh, well. 